Hello, welcome to Pittsburgh Tech Talk. Today we have an amazing show. We have Lee Turbosik, who is a amazing magician, comedian, and a good friend of mine. We actually went to high school together, known each other for a very long time. Um, if you don't know Lee, you definitely should. If you don't follow on Snapchat, chat, you definitely should. He's always uploading uh, little magic tricks and jokes that he's doing around town or all over the US now at colleges and all these different speaking events. Uh, it should be a really fun show just because of the history and how much we know each other. I'm going to be talking to him a little bit about uh, technology, his entrepreneurism, kind of self-promoting himself. Uh, I, th I think it'll be a really interesting episode. So thanks for joining us again for this week's episode of Pittsburgh Tech Talk. Without further ado, we're going to talk with Lee. One, two, three, four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, gonna shine. Life is good. I'm doing fine. Ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out. I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening. And together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me, that's right. And if you want a good tomorrow, it's pretty simple, got a final life to follow. And if you do, you have a future real bright. And it's a combination of consistency, come on. So how's it going, Lee? Hey, Welcome buddy. to the show. <laughs> good to see you, man. Yeah, man, it's been a while, huh? Very. Yeah, so what's, uh, you, since we've last talked, you, like, you're blowing up. You're all over. Every time I turn on Facebook or TV, you're, you seem to be everywhere. I've been, uh, I've been a busy guy last yeah. uh, 12 months, so. Very cool. Yeah. So why don't, you, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and kind of what you do? Because I know like, you're kind of like the jack of all trades. I know you do, like, you, you do stand up comedy now, you're doing your speaking events, so you're a magician. Full, full time magician, comedian, touring the country, performing at corporate and college you know, universities around the country. So okay. that's pretty much the primary, that's the bulk of it. Uh, but also, you know, it's obviously speaking, emceeing events, stuff like that. And obviously doing a lot of stuff on social media. Yeah. And that's like, that's the new thing though. Like, that is if definitely, If you want to be yeah. famous, you ha it's no longer you can going build. On. Yeah, you can literally build your own brand from a YouTube channel. And that's so. something I want to talk to you about because I think that's really interesting is that you are your own marketer. I mean, you're doing all this work. You're also marketing yourselves. So you have to learn all the new technologies and how to promote yourself. And people, I don't think, realize how hard that really is. You, you really have to n learn all the new technology. You do, yeah. That's obviously just even, even the new social media platforms that have come out, like Snapchat and, and, and trying to create content for that type of uh, platform, knowing that it's only like a 10-second video. Uh, but just, just to... Technology in general with magic is, is there's definitely um, a lot of things happening and it's definitely making it a lot easier for people like myself to put our content out there. I wouldn't call it easy though, because I think it takes a lot of work. It and, does, And yeah. a lot of people don't realize how much time and, and money and just, if you don't have the money when you're bootstrapping, like how much time and energy you have to put into this. It's mm -hmm. like you're, you're promoting yourself as the business. Yes. So you kind of your own worst critic, you have to put this t all this time in to make sure everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. We're talking about it. Uh, off camera oh, yeah. about you, you know, you want to make sure everything's perfect. It's your identity, so it's hard to even hire somebody because they're not gonna, they're not gonna put it, the same level of detail. And it's also even more difficult as a magician because the minute I put something out onto the internet, uh, people um, automatically think that it's a camera trick or it was staged when it's not. So therefore, I even have to put more emphasis on making sure it looks exactly perfect for you know putting online. And I can totally attest to that. We've talked about. Yeah. It. I think Chris Angel is terrible. <laughs> like I've watched this guy, and it's like obviously it's just video editing. It's not like it's it kind of loses any luster for me because anybody. I mean, I could do the tricks he does, and yeah. I could make myself disappear by having this green wearing a green shirt. Yeah. But you actually do everything you do. It's like really cool. It's, it's real like, time. You could do yeah. it in front of me. You could yep. do it on, and you've done this on some national I, TV shows. I agree too. that anything you do on the internet, sh you should be able to perform in real life, in a real life scenario. So that's why any type of magic that I do or, 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 or put out or come up with, I want to make sure that it's audience tested for a real, a real world performance. And what was that big show you were on? I know you were on a show. I did America's Got Talent last That's season. It. Yeah. Okay. And is that the same as American, I was going to say American's Got Idol, but. America, uh, America's yeah, Idol. Yeah, American, American Idol. Idol. No, they're uh, completely different. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But so, so what did you do? What was your. Big so America's Got Talent is uh, obviously, it's, it's, it's kind of like a modern day gong show. If you remember the gong show. Uh, Maybe before our time. Yeah, that was in, in the I, 70s I and the 80s. Uh, yeah. Biggest show in the world. It's okay. just about. It's a multi-talented, all walks of all forms of t uh, entertainment go on to that show. You'll see anything from people jumping on tacks to guys chugging eggs, okay. to magic, comedy, singing. So 
Uh, American Idol, where it's just singing based. American, uh, America's Got Talent is literally just everything. So when I did the show, uh, the producers, I worked with the producers with a few tricks and to get, you know, uh, to get one on the show and then to film it. So. And how'd you get on there? Was it showing everything you've done? Did you have to show like a so, big social media presence? Well, and, well it's and funny, you, you, we brought up the fact that the different mediums, the platforms that are out there, the one that did it for me was Instagram. I was creating uh, two years ago when I was traveling around the country doing these shows for these corporations and these colleges, I was creating magic content in every city that I was going to. And I put all these uh, videos together and I, I gave it a like, kind of a brand. I called it Anything Is Possible because I never knew where I was gonna be in the country and I never knew what type of magic trick I could film in those locations. So it was just kind of a free for all. What well, was those videos that got were seen by or by the eyes of the producers of America's Got Talent, and they reached out to me and oh, they wanted cool. to bring me to the show. So you didn't apply? They no, just, they saw oh, the stuff. Yeah, they, yeah, it just it naturally through the the power of the internet, it found its way to the right people. Oh, cool! Yeah, because yeah. I see you're always with celebrities. Like you're doing these tricks for yeah. I saw like Wiz Khalifa. Wiz is definitely a guy I know, and, like, and you yeah. just like what well, you just like. You just happen to be where they're at and doing tricks, or how does that? How, you, uh, like, you find them out, or sometimes you know I have a lot of friends that are in the entertainment industry. So yeah. whether if it's just me reaching out to a friend of a friend and just saying, hey, I'm going to be in town. Uh, like the stuff that I've done with Wiz, I've done it in Pittsburgh over the years, but I've done it in different cities, uh, just having different connections to him as well as other celebrities when when being in Hollywood or in New York or stuff like that. So those opportunities do when they do present themselves, I try to make the most of it and just blow their minds and, and obviously capture it on video. <laughs> cool, man. Well, one thing I want to talk to you about, we're obviously Pittsburgh Tech Talk. Yeah. I want to talk to you about a few things. I want to talk about um, basically your self-promotions, mm -hmm. uh, how you're able to do that and how to build it up because I think it's very hard for people to understand how much time and energy. It's not that you just upload stuff to Facebook and it happens to take off. There's a lot of work and energy behind that. Yeah. But I also want to talk to you too about how technology is changing your industry. And this is something, you know, technology is changing everybody's job. I don't care what you're yeah. in. Uh, technology is having an influence. And it's interesting because I imagine your industry where it's all about illusion and misdirection, yeah. that technology can really take a spin that we've never thought about as people not in the industry. Well, I, I, I love technology. I, I totally embrace it because it obviously is making our lives easier for traveling, banking, every just literally every facet of our lives. Looking at videos about cats. Yeah, looking at videos about cats yeah, is I mean, super important. I mean, it's so important. easy now. I've got <laughs> GIFs, i got JPEGs. I mean, it's amazing. But it also, for a magician, uh, it is kind of making people desensitized to what really is amazing. Because when you really start to think about it, what our phones can do now is really incredible. And, and because they're so incredible, in order for me to do a magic trick and blow your mind, there's, you, in your mind sometimes you can just think, well, I have an app that can just do all these amazing things. Yeah. So maybe, maybe the magic trick works the same way when in actuality it doesn't. But mm -hmm. magic definitely is, make, is, is a lot more difficult to impress somebody when they can have something literally at the touch of their fingertips. And is there, is there more devices coming out for the industry, like things that are specifically for magic, like mm -hmm. sensors that go over your body that control like a robot in the background Not or something? Not really in that, in that mindset where it's helping us accomplish any of the tricks. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that uh, the technology is being used more on the, the, on the production side, where if, okay. I'm, if I'm doing my show at a college and I'm doing a 60 minute show, uh, I used to have to rely on a sound engineer, I'd have to rely on an, a lighting engineer uh, to control everything and learn the cues of my, of my show before the actual show would happen. So in, ess in essence, I'm doing two shows. I'm teaching uh, production assistants at these, at these universities the run of my show so they get it right. While with technology now, I actually now have little gizmos that I can control all the, the music and the lighting of my show just from a little remote in my pocket. Oh, wow. So I'm able to, to eliminate any of the, the user error. So you're like the one-man band. I'm a one-man band, yeah. The drum on the back exactly. and the cymbals so every, and harmonica. Everything that's happening in the show, I'm literally running out of, out of, out of my pocket. So, yeah, which and, makes and, the barrier to entry much easier. Yes. Because before you needed a whole crew and a whole yeah. team, and now you're able to do this. But of course, there's, there's more learning. You have to mm -hmm. learn now how to run video and lights yes. and audio. Yeah. So it makes it harder, but at the same time, gives you that opportunity. But it, and it gives me the freedom to be able to do these things when I go, you know, when I go to these locations, I can just do it myself. 
and I know that if anything goes wrong in the show, that it's on me and it's not on so somebody else. So there's no else. pressure then. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just on no you. Pressure there's to no get, one else you can to blame. To get all the cues right, to get all the tracks right. It, it, and I'll be honest, as I, as I do the shows, technology, there's always going to be something that goes wrong. I was on stage uh, a few nights ago doing a comedy show in Bedford Springs, and halfway through my show, the, the receiver wasn't picking up my, my transmitter, and I had a little bit of a malfunction. So I had, a, I had to stop the show and just say, hey, people, these things happen. And I walked over and just hit the reset button. And Did you blame Obama? I wanted to like blame, I, I, I wanted to blame call terrorism. Him I call to blame. him out. <laughs> More comedians need to do that. I know, we should when, all. When he, when he messes with their mics. Um, so you're traveling a lot. Are you staying in Pittsburgh? I mean, I know you know you, that was you're the, from here. We went to high school together. But are you school, yeah. are you going to stick here in Pittsburgh now that you're seeing the world and traveling and I, seeing all these great college campuses? Uh, I plan to stay here in Pittsburgh. Whoa, yeah. nice! I, I made that decision quite a few years ago. Right out of college, I had the opportunity to either one to move to LA and go be a little guppy the obvious, in, in the yeah. biggest you know ocean ever, or I could have gone to New York and done the same thing. But I decided you know this is where I wanted to be. And I had a mentor, as a, as a magician, I had a magician mentor growing up, and he was able to live in Pittsburgh and make a great living at what he did and just kind of, just jet set. Just, he would go, he'd fly out, do a show, he'd come back. So that's exactly what I, what my, uh, what I wanted to, you know, that's awesome. make happen. Well, I'm sure everyone here is glad you're yeah. sticking around. It's so, uh, one more uh, feather in our cap here yeah. for the city. So what do, you, what do you think about Pittsburgh? We've obviously grew up here. How do you think things have changed? Um, since even we'll just throw back since we were in high school because before that we probably didn't know much was going yeah, on in the city. Yeah. What, how do you think things are changing in Pittsburgh? What are, what are the big issues? What are the big, I guess, how are we evolving? What there are your thoughts? There is so much to do. There's a lot more to do, I feel, today than there was when we were in high school. But uh, the city is growing like leaps and bounds. Like we all know that. Uh, it's, this, this, I love seeing Pittsburgh embrace technology. I've heard of so many things with obviously with Bakery Square and we, you know, Uber's coming to Pittsburgh. There's all these amazing new technology hubs and, and, and companies that are moving into our area and putting us more on the map for what we already do best. And I think Peduto has a large part to play in that. Yes, I oh, mean, for sure. He just seems like he's as progressive. He just does not seem like what we've had here is for Pittsburgh leadership. Um, and as tech guys, we're always pushing Peduto. It seems like he's really pushing the tech. He's really pushing the young kind of entrepreneur scene. So it's glad that you're seeing that as well. In I space. am. Yeah, and even talking to, to the mayor, uh, he's embraced some of my ideas, something of a few things that I want to do in Pittsburgh. And he's all about them. So I'm all for it. And that's one of the cool things about um, being in a small city like this. Mm -hmm. It's easy for guys like us to just, oh, well, we're going to go talk to the mayor. You know, in a lot yeah, of cities, yeah. I tell people that, and they're like, yeah. what do you mean? I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, he donated lunch with the mayor. I had a yeah. charity event. I called him up, and he donated mm -hmm. uh, his time. That's really, really cool. I think it's, it speaks le leaps and bounds to being in a smaller city and why probably we want to stay in a yeah, city oh, like yeah. this. Is, That's why I chose to stay here, for sure. The connections, and it's easy to meet people. Mm -hmm. It's I, I think you're two degrees away from anyone that you want to talk to, which is one of the reasons I love it. Because in tech, it's all about working together and partnering up. And a lot of companies I've worked with have merged together. They started as two different companies, and now they joined for forces and have one killer app or yeah, one killer yeah. business. Now, with your industry, is there a lot of other? I don't. I literally don't know many magicians. You're the only magician I know in Pittsburgh. <laughs> uh, hashtag yeah. Pittsburgh magician. Pittsburgh magician. Yeah. Um, but uh, also comedians. I mean, I don't really. You don't. I don't hear much about that plugged in. But are there a lot of up and coming? Yeah, magicians there's a lot. There's really not a lot of magic in Pittsburgh. Uh, but there are a lot of. Uh, and I've plugged myself into uh, the comedy uh, community as well as like the sketch comedy community and the, the TV personality community in the Who city. Who's in the sketch comedy groups? I'm not even. So, there's, so the place to go for that is the Arcade Comedy Theater on the uh, you know, on Liberty Avenue in, in downtown. Wow. That's where that's where sketch comedy is happening. It's also big in Pitt uh, on Pitt's campus, but uh, but stand-up comedy is a lot of young really great stand-up comics, uh, Derek Novschneider, Matt Light. There's all these young guys that are doing really really uh, taking are really talented and are just mm -hmm. Using their talents wisely, um, you know, getting a lot of stage time and trying to do the bigger things. So Are these younger guys, younger guys, yeah. And yeah. then of course you got guys like Billy Crawford, um, Sean Blackums, and you know, uh, Mike Wysocki. There's and those brand of guys that have been have, uh, have been around for for some time in Pittsburgh, but are on the national level as well. 
Okay. Yeah. And I just, I mean, maybe I'm just not that plugged into yeah. it. I'm always <laughs> traveling. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I love comedians as much as the next mm -hmm. guy, but I'm, I'm not a big TV guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, which is ironic. Um, but I, yeah, it's interesting. Maybe I should look a little bit more. Yeah, Pittsburgh has so shows. many young, talented uh, entertainers right now that are really coming into their own in the city. And I think they're going to be names that you're going to be seeing a lot uh, down the line too. And are they asking you for advice a lot? Like are these like the younger yeah. guys? Are they like, hey, Lee, how do you do that? I or? get I get hit up a lot by the younger guys for advice, mainly because they want to learn how I broke into the college market, how to how to build a brand. Uh, because I was able to take magic, being a magician, and, and turn it into a, like a business, and that's kind of hard to do. And and it's kind, of, but it's the same thing for a comedian. It's just you're selling comedy, you're selling your you know your personality of comedy. So it's kind of a lot along the lot, same lines, but breaking. They wanted to learn how to break into the college market, yeah. how to tour and, and, and build and build a fan base. So they're not asking how to make themselves better to get picked up by colleges. They're just asking like, what's the quick fix to get in? Is they they the, want to know. Yeah, they want to know some of the secrets. Yeah, you know, yeah, some of the secrets of breaking in. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, same in our industry as well. I mean, I tell people, if you create, if you create a great product, the rest will come. Yes. There's not a magic button yeah. you push to get in in front of a, a big VC or angel yeah, investor. Yeah. It's just, it's create the best quality you can and things happen. And, and you've been doing this forever. I mean, you've been doing this since high school. Yeah, high school magic. on when we were filming them on the, you know, the, the handy cams. Yeah. But now we, when I shoot stuff, we were talking about quality. I'm a very big believer in, you know, if you're going to put something out, try to put out the best product you can. And so when I film now, I, I totally only want to work with some of the best, you know, videographers in Pittsburgh, and I only want to work with some high-end equipment because I know that the stuff that I'm creating for, you know, possibly your eyes to see, I want it to be as the best as it can be it, that I can potentially put out. So that's why I love this city has so many amazing different avenues. Like even being here today with working with you on this on, on this, this is something that you probably couldn't do in a lot of other cities. Yeah, so, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, uh, this to me, um, this show is just amazing because mm -hmm. it's there's if the government's paid for. I literally reached out to PCTV, great guys, um, had the show idea, and and here we are. Yeah, and you here know, you it's are. A great. It's just a great community where I feel like. Um, we're a bigger city. I mean, we're big as far as from what I'm used to, like mm -hmm. where I was living in Costa Rica before this. For those who don't know, um, but it's but it's small enough where I feel like I can I can get a hold of anyone. Yeah. And I know a lot of people. I walk down the street and I feel like I'm just like hey hey mm. hey. You know, it's like it's a cool community, and, I, and you know way more people than I do. I mean, <laughs> I look at your comments and your likes, and I mean, you've really spent time developing your brand. I've worked on it. Yeah, it's definitely something I put a lot of time and energy in because I saw the potential growth of it. Mm -hmm. in, in Pittsburgh and being that I'm going to stay here and live here, obviously, you know, having people know who you are in your hometown for something obscure like being a magician, uh, I obviously want as many people to know who I am as possible because not every day, you know, you're booking a magician. So yeah, yeah. you have to really, <laughs> so, so you got to uh, really put that web out there as much as you can. There, there's, um, there's a guy from uh, Influence and Co. This company, and he's John Hall is the CEO. Okay. And he's writing a book called Top of Mind. And I think it's a, a great concept. I just saw him speak uh, at this Summit Series event. And it's really interesting. It's about always being at the top of mind. So always feeding these little tidbits of information, always getting yourself out mm -hmm. there. So you're always at the top of mind. So if someone thinks magician and they, they yeah. see the Snapchats and the Instagrams and the Pinterest. And, and that's why I, I kind of do feel it is important to put out stuff almost daily. Uh, you don't want to bombard your, you know, the, your, your fan base or your, the people that are tuning into your stuff. You don't want to bombard them with too much, but you want to be in their face as often as you can. Um, but that's what's important, you know. And but but at the same time, putting out quality, okay. and that's what that's the juggle is finding as much stuff as you can to put out but also having it be good. <laughs> and I think what a lot of people don't realize is if you're obviously your your brand, you're you're selling your time, yes. your services, that's your product. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is a lot of CEOs and CMOs or whatever you want CXOs, whatever you want to say, they they don't put time building their own brands. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a sad thing because I think you do need to, in this day and age, everyone's going to Google you. I yes. hear a lot of people tell me, "Well, I keep everything off the internet cuz I don't want people to know what I do and I don't want I I'm private." Well, then they're going to go with a competitor. And, oh, yeah. and if they're going to research you, and they, nowadays we just expect to know everything about everyone else's lives because of social media. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what you're doing, I think a lot of um, a lot of execs could learn about how not to the level that you're doing. Um, you know, not I'm not telling CEOs of PNC to, to do magic tricks <laughs> and you know make things disappear. I don't want to go out of business. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's interesting. I, I think it'd be very important for people to build their brands because it helps you so much in business by being able to. Um, 
to, to build that when people find, search you online to be able to find what you want them to find, yeah. opposed to just that MySpace pick from 2009. Oh yeah, that would be know. embarrassing. Do you still have your MySpace? I don't even know. I haven't even, I haven't man, even logged on there. I'll <laughs> friend you. You make me your top eight. I'll make you my top eight. Oh man. It's not a song. I actually, I tried to log into that. It's amazing. It's a totally different platform. That was a, that it's a was music a, platform now. That was a bad investment by Justin Timberlake. Yeah, it was a like 21 uh, million. I don't something. know what he put in. I know it was a lot, and I know it probably didn't pan out as how he No, thought. but he's Justin Timberlake. Exactly. I mean, what can't that guy do? He can't promote some MySpace. <laughs> he can't, he That's can't the one bring thing he can't back do. MySpace from yeah. the dead. So yeah. we were talking about this earlier about Twitter, because I'm not a big Twitter guy. I'm uh, not really a big Twitter either, but I'm more of because my, my art is so visual. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think Twitter is, is great for the, the pure stand-up comics out there. Or, mm -hmm. But for me as a magician, I, I use Twitter as a marketing platform mostly. Because I consult for businesses on how to use social media. Mm -hmm. But for myself, Twitter, I just, I'm not a tweet head. I don't know. I just made that up. Hashtag. <laughs> tweet head. Uh, I'm not a big fan. I just, I just never really got into that where I feel uh, the other mediums I'm, I'm kind of embracing a bit more. The Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, I just got into Snapchat. Snapchat's I've been watching you on there. I think there. it's the biggest app in the world at the moment. Yeah, it's growing like yeah. gangbusters. Yeah. And it makes sense because you want to shoot something, you don't want to live forever. So mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense to me where when I first heard about it, I was like, I can't handle another social media. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now, um, you know, with self-promotion, you have to do it. People want to be able to see that behind the scenes. And with my Facebook, I kind of promote more of like my brand mm -hmm. with the occasional little personal insight. Yes. Yeah. Snapchat, I feel comfortable you know, we were just doing here, having yeah, to play just, with a baby just, hand. Yeah, just random, random shenanigans yeah, just on Snapchat. Showing That's, people's lives. And I think, I think Snapchat is the, is the it, the now, the, the instant uh, content, where Instagram is something where you put a little more thought, thought process into what you actually want to put on your, your feed. And in the same way with, uh, with Facebook, because obviously these, these things kind of live forever, where Snapchat, it's going gonna, it's gonna to auto-delete in 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, Twitter is, a weird, is one of those weird things. It's going to live forever. Uh, no one's really going to go back through your thousands of tweets, unless you're a candidate for the presidency, where yeah. they want to dig up dirt on you. But that's why Twitter, for me, hasn't been my main focus. My main focus has been more Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. Okay. So... And one of the things I want to talk to you about here, because I know our time's limited, when was that like aha moment? Because I remember when you were, you know, I mean, you were grinding, you were hustling, <laughs> and then it seems like overnight, like I didn't even know exactly, I couldn't exactly pinpoint it, but I was just seeing you all over the place. You know what? When I, was that moment? I think that happened right out of college for me when I started taking on and doing, going and performing at other universities, and, and, and it just started to explode. You know, I started to go to a lot more campuses, a lot more universities. Uh, that was an aha moment, um, getting booked at the, con like I go and perform at national conventions and conferences that are booking conferences for those specific um, markets for the trade show or for the corporate or college market. They all have these individual little systems in place where you okay. can go and perform and get promoted and booked by obviously buyers from these locations. Uh, that was one when I went to perform at those and I was I was seeing, you know, the masses of amounts of bookings coming through that way. That was kind of an aha moment where this is something right out of college where I didn't have to go get that nine to five or yeah. use my degree. I could just keep doing my art and, and, mm -hmm. and people were willing to pay me to, to go perform and, and stand on stages around the country and, and do my thing. So. And have you hit a point, and I shouldn't say have you, when have you hit the point? Every entrepreneur, you, you hit a wall. Maybe this isn't going to work. Maybe I made a mistake. Uh, if you be honest, have you hit a point? I mean, I'll be honest. It's happened to me several times. I invest in companies. I, I mean, I've, I've been in lawsuits. I've almost got <laughs> bankruptcy. I've taken mortgages since my house. Keep yeah. my company going. Where, you, as I think entrepreneurs, the more that I meet, it's this roller coaster. You get these really high highs and these really low lows. Yeah. And with your industry, you're doing everything yourself. You're yeah. promoting yourself, your brand. Mm -hmm. you're, it's not like like I can sell off a company. Oh, yeah. well, I invested and sales are in the slumps. And you know what? I'm just going to sell or piece it off. You can't do that. I can't do that, So no. I imagine the amount of stress I would have. Is, you had to hit, hit a wall. Well, I'll be honest. There, early on, uh, not having that steady paycheck forever, I've never had a nine to five. I've never worked for somebody else. I've been my own boss, been my own creator of my future since I was 12 years old. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've been a little entrepreneur since I was 12, uh, doing magic shows for birthday parties, and, and it just grew and you know, blew into a lot of more of other things since then. 
Uh, so I never really understood that stability. It was always uh, the starving artist yeah. you know, lifestyle for me. But for me, when I went to college and got my degree in marketing from Robert Morris, that was my backup plan. So okay. if anything ever happened, you know, if I ever lost a finger or anything like that, yeah. one of those things happened, I had, I had the was quote that, unquote the B plan. Yeah. Was that, was yeah. that I was going to say, thanks, thanks yeah, for man, referencing uh, that. You're always hurt. I know, seriously. Uh, but I had the backup plan. Okay. And, and with having the backup plan, it gave me a little more, I guess I want to say risk. I could risk okay. more. And so you never had those lows. I had. You I, never had those lows. Had where a, you're like, oh my god, maybe I should have became a. I should have marketing did, consultant for McKenzie or something. I, I was always so into magic and being an entertainer that I really always had blinders on, and I didn't want to think like that. But there were op, there were some you know some op, I wouldn't say opportunities, but there have been some times in my life where opportunities presented themselves for me to take a different direction. But I've always steered against it. Yeah. And, and even in, you know, I would say the, the worst parts of the career, I've always been full force ahead. I've always seen the brighter side. I've always trusted what I was doing and, and wanted to, to push it. So. And I think that's what you need to be an entrepreneur. People ask me, what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? What's the main trait that, that you notice? And to me, it's stubbornness. Yeah. I mean, I'm too stubborn to fail. Yeah. It's like a lot of people, they hit that first speed bump, second mm -hmm. speed bump, they go, oh, it doesn't work for me, you're so lucky, you're yeah. so lucky. It's not luck, it's well, just refusing to fail. I mean, the, the, I would say a speed bump for me was actually last year when I was on America's Got Talent. Uh, we shot it, I, I, I got four yeses, I moved on, standing ovation, it was amazing, and then they started showing my footage on the show, and then about four weeks in, they actually called me and, and, and they let me know that they weren't going to show my full performance of my trick. Yeah. And I was a little bummed because in hindsight, I, I, you know, being on the show and then not being on the show. Yeah. It, it was Telling kind all of, your friends, yeah, getting pumped, getting excited. Yeah, it was pumped, kind of a killer, but it, honestly, it, it just it opens a door to another thing. And, yeah. and, and, and it has. And so... That's a great outlook, and we're almost out of time here. Is there anything that you, you want to share, anything you want to talk about uh, before we kind of end up here? Anything about Pittsburgh, anything you're doing coming up here? I would definitely say find me on Instagram. I do a lot of really cool stuff on, on that uh, with videos. And, and I what's do, your, just Lee Turbosic? Just at Lee Turbosic. I do a Monday Magic segment on Pittsburgh Today Live I've seen uh, that. where I go cool. on and perform live with Christine Sorensen. Uh, and then the other cool thing I have probably coming out that I can announce today is that uh, I have a, a project in the works with Red Bull, That's which, exciting. which will be coming out here in the next uh, week or two that you'll be seeing. Yeah, so, I've seen the little clips. You actually yeah. filmed one in my office. Filmed one at iFlow. Yeah, so. so very cool, man. Well, thank you very much, Lee. Yeah, man. I'll shake you with my wonky hand uh, here. Yeah. And uh, thanks for being on. It was it was Pleasure amazing. And if anyone has any questions or, or wants to talk to Lee about anything, they can reach you on social media. For sure. They can post under the video that we're going to have here on YouTube. And thanks again for, for being on the show. Yeah. All right, thanks, bud. Yep. One, two, three, four, get my shoes on out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing fine. Ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out. I want to sing and shout, take a look and see a beautiful morning.